Hey, what's going on everybody? It's so good to see your faces again. Today I'm sharing with you a handful of tools to optimize your espresso game. There's a lot of tools out there that honestly can just be kind of a waste of time and money. So today I wanna to share with you the tools that I think will actually be worth it and will actually up your espresso game. So over the past couple of months, I've been trying to improve my own setup at home. Most of what I'm gonna talk about is pretty universal and can be adapted to pretty much any setup. And a couple things are a little bit more specific to how I work and just to how my equipment is set up. So I'll try to unpack all of that stuff as I go. So the first tool that I would add to pretty much any setup is a precision brew basket. Now it might seem a little bit over the top to get a precision laser etched brew basket, but actually the manufacturing process for these stock baskets, this is the basket that came with the rocket, is not very good. The holes are very uneven and sometimes they're not punched out at all in some spots. So you actually have, essentially if you're thinking of how the espresso is gonna flow through, it's not gonna have an even path to pass through. So essentially, no matter what you do, how good your technique gets, how good your coffee is, it's always gonna hit that bottleneck on its way out. So it's very easy to just install something either from La Marzocco Home makes some pretty inexpensive ones. There's also VST, which is sort of the pioneer behind precision brew baskets. And then what I've got in my machine right now is a, ooh, it's hot, it's hot. Oh my gosh is a Barista Pro, and this is an 18 gram basket. I'm really happy actually with the 18 gram basket. I think it's just a better size. Whichever brand you like, it doesn't really matter. It's up to you, whatever you can find most easily. But again, to me, this is really a no brainer. Now, the next thing I would add is definitely nothing that is new, probably to most of you who have been into coffee on the internet. This has been around since at least 2004, but I would say that there's a lot more tools available now and it's way easier to get into. There's more information. There's a lot more guides on how to use it properly. There is a bit of a learning curve on this. So the first couple of shots you have might not be great and it might take a little bit of practice before you start to see a benefit from this. But essentially what this is gonna do is it's gonna improve the performance of your grinder. So if you're using something like the Vario, this is maybe like three, $450 grinder, depending on where you get it. I got this second hand, so I got a pretty decent deal on it. But WDT will make it perform more like a shop grinder. So taking this from a three to $400-ish grinder to something that performs more like a $1,000 grinder. So even though there is kind of a learning curve and you might actually have worse extractions on the first couple of goes, I think this is well worth the time and effort that it takes to get decent at WDT and improve your extractions. Now the next tool that I have been using for the last couple months, I think almost everybody should use, and this is sort of a work in progress for me. This is heading in the right direction, I think. I will say that with something like the BT Wedge or some sort of palm tamper, I don't really miss my traditional tamper at all. I've been able to get really good extractions with this. I've also gotten to try this out on a Slayer and some commercial machines, and I've had no problems even with higher end grinders. What I like about it is that this is adjustable. So this little piston right here can move up and down and you can lock it into place. There's little tick marks so you know exactly where it is. So then my bed depth and my compression is the same every single time. And as far as ergonomics go, this is really gonna be good for your wrist, your hand, your elbow, your shoulder, your back, your feet. I mean, it's a no brainer for me to keep going with a palm style tamper. The reason that I say this is sort of a work in progress is that in this setting, when I'm using WDT, I don't think it's necessary to have this to redistribute the bed again because it only really redistributes the top. So it feels a bit redundant. But I do really like this. I like how hefty it is. This is about, I think, 19 ounces. So there's almost no effort involved in throwing this in the porter filter and spinning it around. I would probably switch to a palm tamper in this setting where I'm using WDT to do distribution already. That way I don't have to worry about spinning and just drop the thing in, give it a little push to tamp it. Because using a palm style tamper really takes the guesswork out of compression and out of getting your espresso bed nice and flat on the top. So these three things work really well together. You have the BT wedge that's gonna polish the top of your espresso and compact it evenly the same way every time. You have WDT, which will distribute the grounds and make sure that everything is nice and even so the water will flow through evenly. You don't have any bottleneck from your manufacturer's stock basket. So having a VST or some other kind of precision filter basket will make your espresso a lot more consistent. And what I like about most of these things is you don't really have to invest a whole lot of time. It's just, you know, 30 bucks. This one admittedly is pretty expensive, but there are less expensive versions of this out there. They just make sure that it is nice and heavy and that it is about 58.3. So that way there is very little 
wiggle room once you get into your basket. Okay, so I have two more things that I wanted to share with you, which aren't necessarily upgrades depending on your machine. It was unfortunately an upgrade for me. Um, I had to spend a little bit to get a pressure gauge installed on this machine. Now this has been really helpful, but again, not super necessary. What I learned from having this is that my machine was actually calibrated at the factory for 14 bars, which sounds a little intense, but looking back at videos I've made, I've recorded a ton of videos where I'm dialing an espresso and I've had lots of really tasty single origin coffees, lots of tasty blends, some really memorable coffees actually at 14 bar. So not necessarily a horrible thing to have it there, but after talking with a handful of folks from the industry, I decided to try and adjust the OPV down to six bar. And what I've noticed from that is that the shots are a little bit softer, have a little bit more of like a, you know, velvety texture to them and aren't quite as like biting and acidic, which for me is something I really like. And your mileage may vary, but I just want to let you know that that is something to consider if you haven't already. And the very last thing is the Ross droplet technique. So this is also known as RDT, of course, and I don't use it on my setup because I have this little hopper here and because this is all under a counter there's not really a lot of space once this is back where it lives and in, in the corner of my kitchen really nice for making coffee for myself not really nice for making videos of making coffee so i move it out here in this case however for drip coffee i do like to use it and i'll have this little shot glass right here uh, it's not really a shot glass and I have this little cut glass that I like to use to dose my coffee in and this little spoon. I just take the end of the spoon, or since this is such a tiny spoon, I take the bowl of the spoon, get a little bit of water, and then mix it around into my coffee beans right before I go ahead to grind them. And what this does, if you're not familiar with RDT, is that it cuts down on retention in your grinder and also cuts down on static. So coffee's not gonna fly anywhere, make everything dirty, and it's supposed to cut down on waste since stuff's not gonna be sitting on your countertop or in your grinder. So again, if you wanna upgrade your espresso setup, these are the three things that I would recommend and to do them together. You can, of course, do them separately, but I think that they really build on each other. Palm Tamp WDT and the Precision Brew Basket. And if this all feels a little bit over the top, I have a video right here that will cover the basics of dialing pretty much any espresso. Hope you guys are well, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.